What's up, Abe Kislevitz here, and today I'm giving you a tutorial on how to add lens correction to your GoPro footage. I've done this tutorial a long time ago, but my methods have changed now because we have the plugin FX Reframe for Premiere and After Effects. So I'm gonna show you how to make the most out of your GoPro content, get that highest quality by adding lens correction in post using this plugin. Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna show you how to use that as an awesome tool for your video edits a little bit later, but first we're gonna dive right into Premiere and get going. I can see clearly I can see. All right, well, before we get started, I guess it's good to understand why we're even doing lens correction in post in the first place. We have it built into the camera in the form of the linear lens. I personally like to shoot in modes that offer me the most flexibility in post. That's gonna give you the highest image quality. So by shooting in the wide mode of the GoPro, that gives you the ability to either add this lens correction in post, add no lens correction, or go somewhere in between, which a lot of times that's where I end up. So we're going to be walking through the plugin FX Reframe for Premiere today. And you might be familiar with this plugin for 360 content. Well, it's the same plugin. It was developed in-house at GoPro by David Newman. Big shout out. But he made it so that it's a great plugin also to be used for normal GoPro footage for lens correction. And there's a lot more that we can do with it, more than just basic lens correction on and off. And so we'll be walking through all of that. So the very first thing let's do is make sure we have the plugin. So hop on the internet and just search for GoPro FX Reframe. Just make sure Premiere and After Effects are closed, download it, install it. All right, we're in Premiere. I've got a plethora of different footage types, different frame sizes, resolutions. We've got different sequences, 4K, 1080p, social vertical 9 by 16 because we use this plugin a lot for social assets. We'll just walk through all of these different things, make sure you guys are equipped to deal with all these different use cases. So the very first thing I'm going to do is grab this drone shot. It's a 4K drone shot. I'm going to drop it into the 1080p timeline. We'll keep existing settings and right off the bat, we can see that it's cropped in because it is a 4K on a 1080p. Before we even add the plugin, there is one thing that we need to do to prep every single clip. So we're gonna go up to effect controls and scale this down until it fits the frame size. We are at 50% for this one and that's all we need to do before we set up. It is gonna be a little different for different frame sizes and different sequence sizes. So we'll walk through those in a little bit. So go to effects and type in FX and GoPro FX reframe pops in here, apply it to your clip and you'll see that it zooms out and does some funky things. That's because this plugin is default to be set up for 360. So under the FX reframe tab header, go to projection source image. And that's what we're gonna use for all of our normal GoPro 2D footage. If we turn the plugin on and off, you see that there's absolutely no difference. That's because we haven't changed any of the parameters. We'll set up a kind of preset to use for all of your future uses of this plugin, and it'll be super helpful later on. So I'll walk through some of the different settings here. Swivel down this source operations and go past yaw pitch roll to mirror edges. Let's uncheck that by default. EIS crop is at 10. We're not gonna talk about this until a little bit later. It will come into play, but just ignore it for now. And then swivel that back up and go under advanced controls and uncheck motion blur. That's gonna help the speed a little bit. So swivel back up advanced controls. And now let's talk about the different parameters that we have. We've got pan, tilt, rotate, lens curve, and zoom. The thing that we wanna focus on today is lens curve because that's our lens correction. And to get a perfect rectilinear lens on normal GoPro footage, your lens curve is gonna be 70, seven zero. Right off the bat, we can see this is working for us. This is a perfect time to save this as a preset. So we've done all of that setup work. We're in source image projection. We've got the lens curve at 70. All you gotta do is right click on GoPro FX reframe, save preset, and let's save this as something that you can revisit easily. I usually like to label it FXR and maybe GoPro normal. 
So now when we go into our effects controls, every time we open Premiere, we can type in FX and FXR pops up right away. So just to show what we did, let's delete that. Now apply FXR. Everything is fully dialed for all of these clips. So let's rewind a little bit, go back into this clip specifically. After we apply our lens curve of 70, you're gonna wanna play with the zoom until you don't see any of these black edges. And to just show you what this plugin is doing, I'm gonna zoom out first. And you can see by applying this lens curve, it's really stretching out the image left and right and a little bit on the top and the bottom. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give us more room on the left and the right of your image to play with it in post, do some rotate, some fixes, maybe slide it to the left, slide it to the right, readjust your frame. And it's a really, really great plugin to get the most out of your GoPro footage. So let's zoom in until we don't see any black on the screen. And so we're sitting at about 102.8 for the zoom and that looks great. Okay, so we're gonna apply this to another clip. Let's double click this guy. This is a 4.3 clip shot in 2.7K. So I'm gonna drag this into my timeline. Remember we're in a 1080p timeline. And the very first thing we need to do is go up to effect controls again and scale this down until we can't see any edges. And you might wonder why we don't just right click and do set to frame size. Well, if we do that, we add this plugin. So let's go to our FXR preset. And I'm just gonna zoom out to show you what happens if the edges aren't touching the frame. You can see that we're kind of constrained within this box, so we need to make sure that all of the edges are touching each of the edges of the sequence size. So let's go to our scale and scale up until that hits the edge, which is 71.2. And now we can play with our plugin as normal. And we will just scale that right up to there. So now that we understand how lens curve and zoom are working together, let's talk about these other attributes, pan, tilt, and rotate. They're pretty much exactly how they sound, but if you click on GoPro FX reframe the header, you actually have control on the screen to click and drag. So I'm gonna click and drag, and you can see how the pan and the tilt are moving. And then also the rotate, we can do this with the numbers here or on screen on the edges. If you see them, sometimes the frame size will be a little funky because it was designed for 360. Um, but you can click and drag on this edge side outside of this uh, on screen box here. You'll notice when we move this pan and tilt that the motion of the video is not just a slide left and right, but it actually is warping it more like a normal camera. This is how the plugin's been designed to be a virtual camera. And so when you're moving it left and right in space, it looks more like a realistic camera. Now, if your computer is lagging when you're trying to click and drag, which most of the computers do, there's a couple of things that we can do to help the speed of it. Right click and go to playback resolution. Make sure that's as low as it goes. Mine's at a quarter and then right below it, go to pause resolution. Also make sure that that is as low as it can go. If your computer is still having trouble, I recommend using proxy files for all of your editing with GoPro footage. I use it pretty much all the time. I've got mine turned on. You can go over to the bin here and see all of my proxies are attached. That's because I made them earlier. If you don't know what proxies are, definitely do some research online. Also probably a great future tutorial for me to do and walk through, but it's super basic. Links up very easily in Premiere and you just click this button to turn them off and then back on. And so when they're off, it's a lot slower because it is that HEVC. And when you turn them on way quicker, pretty much screams and you can slide through your footage super fast. Okay, we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about the different lens profiles that you can run into because you can have HyperSmooth on boost, those all affect the crop levels. And there's actually a setting in the plugin to deal with that. So I've gone outside and shot a little boring shot of the garage door. And I've set these up in a sequence and I've already gone ahead and applied the different lens correction to these, but I have no hyper smooth, hyper smooth on boost and max lens mod. So I'm going to walk through the plugin and see what has to change for each of those to make these work perfectly. So if we go up to FX reframe and under source operations, there's a setting called EIS crop. I have this set to zero. It's 10 by default because when you have hyper smooth on, there's a 10% crop on the image. 
Let's just turn this on and off. We can see what it looks like off and what it looks like on. I've done a little bit of pan, tilt, rotate to make sure it's kind of squared up in the middle and they're all matching. If we change this crop level to 10, you'll see that the lens correction is not quite perfect. So if you have no hyper smooth, or if you're doing a static time lapse, a night lapse, you're gonna wanna change that EIS crop to zero if you want a perfect rectilinear lens. Likewise, on hyper smooth on, we have that level set at 10, which is the default, which is also what we had our FXR preset set up as. And so if we turn this on and off, we can see the difference here. That looks pretty perfect. And you can even pull down a straight line here and see just how perfect it is. So you can pull this past 70 if you want. You can see that is past rectilinear, but 70 and then these EIS crop levels will get you in a pretty perfect spot. The next one is boost. If you're shooting with hyper smooth boost, that crops in at a whopping 25 to 30%. So I have the EIS crop set at 30. We can turn this on and off. You can see that I added a little bit of tilt to just line it straight up. And then the last one, max lens mod, for those of you that are out there using it, you can actually do a negative EIS crop here. So the max lens mod field of view is actually very similar to the normal GoPro without hyper smooth. So it doesn't have that 10% crop. And then it's even got a little bit more. So I've got the EIS crop level set at negative two. That seems to be pretty good. We turn this on and off. You can see how much this FX reframe plugin is actually doing. So there's one more set of settings under the advanced controls that I wanna talk about, and that will definitely help you in tricky situations. And that is the X and Y offset over here. So that's a little bit different than the pan and tilt, because if you remember when we click and drag, the pan and tilt really emulates a virtual camera looking around in space. The X and Y offset, however, if we click and slide those left and right, it really just slides the image left and right. And that may not seem helpful at first, but I'm gonna show you a clip where it really comes in handy. So we're gonna hop over to this 1080p timeline and I've dragged a drone clip in here where you have that very classic GoPro lens curve on the horizon. I'm looking pretty far down and I just wanna flatten out this horizon. So this is a perfect place to use FXR and You'll notice right off the bat that there's a little bit of strange skewing near the top. When you get to those edges in the top left, top right corner of the GoPro, when you have this lens correction, it gets a little funky. And so what I'm gonna do is tilt the camera down and already you can see it's kind of decompressing a little bit and then swivel down to advanced controls. And I'm gonna use this Y offset to slide the clip back up and get rid of that black and you can either slide it here or there's an on-screen control if we hold command and click and drag anywhere that it does the Y and X offset. And so this is really great for very minute controls. If you wanna frame up the mountain right in the middle and then move this over, you can do it without changing the way that the clip is distorting by just sliding left and right and up and down. All right, I know that was a lot of information. Thanks for hanging in there. It's a perfect time to take a little break and hear from our sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks, it's a subscription service that has pretty much everything you need for editing video content, from stock video to After Effects templates to sound effects. I've always been somebody that thought that I didn't need stock video in my projects until I got the Storyblocks subscription, got on there and saw that they have film grain and lens flares and things that I've been using in my video projects for years and collecting on hard drives and now I can just hop on there and grab whatever I need at any time, and it has been awesome. Lastly, diversity has always been an area that's lacking in stock video, and that's why Storyblocks has a new initiative called Restock, where they are promising at least 20% of their stock video catalog to be diverse people and faces by 2022. Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video, and thanks for hearing me out. All right. Now that we have a good understanding of how to apply lens correction to different modes and settings and all of the attributes, I just wanna talk a little bit about the benefits of shooting in 4-3 aspect ratio. That's one of the questions I get a lot and understand how we can utilize FX reframe to make the most of those shots. So just to recap, if you're not super familiar with it, the GoPro can shoot in a four by three aspect ratio, which is basically 
16 by nine widescreen, but taller. There's more information on the top and bottom of the frame. So I shoot this as much as possible, especially when it comes to POV, because you really wanna get as wide of a view as possible to show as much immersion as you can. So this clip is me riding my bike down the street. I'm gonna drag this into our 1080p timeline. The very first thing we need to do is go up to effect controls and scale down so it fits the frame size. So there we go. We'll apply our FXR preset. If we scale all the way out, you can really see how the FX reframe lens curve is pulling it way out. So it's giving us a lot more room to work with if we wanted to rotate the clip, adjust it, frame it up a little bit better. So we'll scale this up until we can't see anything. And then let's just say that we wanna adjust this rotation to get a little bit more of a flat horizon. I'm gonna turn on proxies so we're working a little bit faster here. And I even have a little bit more room to tilt up and tilt down a little bit if we want to see a different view. So it just allows me to add a little bit more correction than had I shot a 16 by nine frame because I'd be limited by that top and the bottom. And normally with a 4.3 clip, if we didn't have FX reframe, the only thing that we can do is chop off that top and bottom of the frame. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. I'm gonna duplicate this by holding option, dragging up, let's turn off FX reframe, hide the clip below it. And so now if I had wanted to do that rotation and fix the angle, you can see black comes into frame very quickly. So if I scroll back here, Let's adjust this angle here, and then we need to zoom in to get past this black. If we wanna see a little bit more of the bars, that's what we're working with. Now let's compare that to what we have with FX Reframe. You can see we have so much more view to work with, and so it really gives us a more immersive shot. And of course, you don't always need to be at a full 70 for the lens curve. Sometimes with POV, it's a little strong, so you can just dial it back and then zoom in to the point where you don't see any black. And still, we have a lot more information that we're seeing and we've got a much more immersive shot. One of the other huge benefits of shooting in 4.3 aspect ratio is it gives you more leeway in post depending on what frame size you're editing for. A lot of the times we're delivering for widescreen for YouTube, but then we're also doing vertical stuff for Instagram stories and Instagram. And 4.3 just gives you that much more information above and below, so you don't have to crop in and lose that when you're going to vertical stuff. So that's the perfect segue to talk about the last thing that I wanna to touch on, which is using FX reframe in different frame sizes, such as 4K or vertical 9x16. So we've seen how we work with 1080p timelines. We're usually scaling down. 4K is very similar, but we're typically scaling up. So let's copy this clip into this 4K timeline and paste it here. We'll turn off FX reframe. And so what we need to do right off the bat is scale this up until it fills the screen. Okay, we're at 142.3, and then we'll turn FX reframe back on, and you can see that it is working perfectly. Super simple in a 16 by nine, it's very much the same as a 1080p, you're just scaling up versus scaling down. And the last thing is social nine by 16. This is where we're gonna see the benefits of shooting in four by three. So we'll paste that in, turn off FX reframe to see what we need to scale to. If you recall in 1080p and 4K, we're scaling to fill the left and the right. In a vertical, we're scaling to fill the top and bottom. So we'll just make sure that's filled up there. We'll turn FX reframe back on, and then we can adjust the zoom accordingly to fill the frame. There we go. And that is how you deal with adding FX reframe in different frame sizes. There's really no difference. It's just that that prep work that we do for every single clip before we add FX reframe, all we need to do is that same thing where we see no black in the frame and you just wanna barely fill it and then you can apply your FX reframe. All right, I know that was a lot of information, so thanks for sticking through this with me. This plugin has been huge for me personally in terms of getting the most quality out of my GoPro, being able to frame up each shot perfectly, getting that lens correction dialed in exactly where it needs to be, and that's always the question that I get asked is how do you retain that quality with a GoPro? So I hope this has been helpful for you guys, 
And if you can believe it, there's even more stuff that we can do with this plugin. So subscribe if you haven't already, because I've got more tutorials in the works. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see anything specific. But other than that, I will see you guys later. Thanks again.